Welcome to Dark Sorcery. I'm Alfredo Martinez, and I have with me the one and only Ace the Goblin, a cult rap artist. Ace, good to have you back on. I'm glad to be back on, my brother. I'm glad to be back on. Fucking love like this channel, man. I love what you're doing, man. Like always, man. Bringing Thank the you. knowledge to the people. That's what we That's do right. in the occult world. That's right, man. I, I appreciate the support. Most definitely. And uh, everybody who's watching at home, today we are going to be studying Grand Grimoire of Infernal Pax by Michael W. Ford. And I see that Ace has his copy too. So yeah, um, you know, overall, I think this is, it's uh, not very long. It's a short book. Uh, it's right, pretty right. short, pretty self-explanatory. What are your overall thoughts about this book before we I jump mean, into? I like this book because like you say, it's pretty short. It's very simple and very easy to understand. And what, what I really like is how Michael W. Ford took this book and showed people the true way of how to make packs with demons and devils and not the Hollywood and misconcepted way of, oh, you have to sell your soul or you have to kill somebody, a sacrifice, you know, it's a lot simpler than that. And this book explains it very easy because it's very short. Like it's, yeah, there's there's no the point. Yeah, there's no reason for our cult books to be overly complicated. Yeah. Just straight to the point. Just tell straight up how it goes, you know, in right. an easy and understandable way. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. Let's go Definitely. ahead and turn to page. Let's see. Let's start out with go to page 10. Okay. All right. OK, so first paragraph, middle of the paragraph, it says offering your own blood to materialize a spirit not only binds a close control over the power yet infuses it with a spiritual extension of the Black magician. This should be performed only by an experienced adept, as the results, if not calculated properly in the mind attuned, may lead to self-destruction or a great loss to the sorcerer. Now, I will agree that, you know, using your own blood, it shouldn't be something that you just hand out to any spirit. Right. It should be something sacred. Um, I think that if before you offer a spirit of blood, you want to, you know, do your homework on that spirit and, and think, you know, very, very seriously if that's something that you want to do. You agree? And, and verify that you're in contact with that certain spirit, you know, and that's easy to do with your mind's eye and uh, feeling of energy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, you, again, you know, um, not too long ago, we talked about trickster spirits who come forth and, and try to um, pretend that they're that spirit that you're calling up. But there's different ways that we've talked about where you can go ahead and test them out. And uh, so yeah. you don't give your energy to the wrong spirit. Um, exactly. But yeah, um, I think that, um, you know, it is our goal as black magicians, as occultists in general to ascend and become better but if you're handing your blood out to any spirit especially a demon you know who's you know who you're trying to contact with that can affect your ascension i think do you think you agree with that i mean i'd say you know if you give your blood to the wrong spirit what this can do is it can cause parasites and attachments with this spirit that can bring down the ascension process and you know, uh, enlightenment processes in the mind and of your uh, spirit and soul and uh, magical workings, you know, this spirit can, uh, if it's not the right spirit that you want, even if it is, even if you are in contact with this certain spirit, if you're, if you don't have this certain relationship and they don't agree, you know what I'm saying? It's not up that and you just hand it over then yeah, that could be catastrophic for the practitioner. Yeah, you see, blood blood magic is something to be taken serious. Oh yeah, and not something lightly. Definitely, because uh, blood holds very uh, a great amount of magical power, a humongous amount of magical power, and this is why you know sometimes in ritual you will just draw blood, or we draw blood on a sigil because it brings forth that energy to charge it or to charge your spell, which whatever, whatever magical working you're in. Right. And right. you know, it don't have to be to a, a spirit, you know, you just, you, when you draw that blood, that magical power starts seeping forth, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is great amount of power in blood, but there's also great responsibility in using it magical. 
Yes, definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You have to, just like Michael Ford says, you have to be in a depth. And what that means is for people who don't know, you have to study and you have to gain the knowledge first. You don't just, oh, jump in it and then think you can do it and stuff like that. And you're just you're just a beginner. That's what we call dabblers and beginners. You have to work your way up, become an adept and then start practicing um, intense magical workings like this. Yeah, the reason one of the reasons is, is because you not only have to have the knowledge, but you need to have the understanding. See, exactly. you can have knowledge, but once you have that understanding, then you know the right way to apply that knowledge. Right. And to add to that, it's like you can't just get the understanding from one read either of any of the knowledge uh, presented to us. You have to continuously study it to get it down pat to understand it. Yeah. And don't just read, you know, one author's book on the subject. Go right. to different authors. Go to different different people and get different opinions and exactly. that's how you learn you know it's it's always uh been my philosophy of you know don't grow just from the out inside out but from the outside in meaning you bring other opinions to you and then you can take from that which you and then you just grow right. from there exactly and that deals with eclecticism because you know a lot of people they like to go to dogmatic uh pathway and they stay bound to one thing like take a a, a wiccan for uh, instance, you know, they mostly yep. they'll really only practice Wiccan and, you know, pagan practices that deals with the Greek gods. You know what I'm saying? They'll be stuck to that. But when you're eclectic, you can study this and you can study that, just like you said, mm -hmm. and take what works for you as a practitioner. And that's yeah. perfectly OK. A lot of people don't understand. They like to make it so serious. Oh, that you have to do everything a certain way. Nah, man, magic is unique and chaotic and beautiful and so you can form your own magic from your own studies taken from multiple different things and and from that way you will find your own way own way of doing things and you exactly know, even, and you can even develop your that's own with anything skills. that's with anything though like say you're at a job you might yeah. be in a job and they tell you to do it this way but you find an easier way to get it done and you start doing it like that you know yeah <laughs> it, and yeah, you know, you can ask different people, well, how do you do it? How do you right. do it? How do you do it? And then you'll exactly. just find your own way through experience and then you just have your own style. Exactly. And, you know, so, yeah. So let's go to page 21. Okay. And on page 21, let's go to second paragraph, uh, middle of it. It says, Jehovah or Yahweh was the tribal deity of the Hebrews then adopted by the Roman Empire to control and maintain authority over the vast and crumbling territory it sought to keep. And then the, uh, it says, the demons herein are bringers of power to those brave enough to take it. But I want people to realize that uh, that is true. Uh, in fact, uh, I think uh, the Hebrew God was originally a uh, storm God of the Canaanites. Yeah. Definitely. Eventually, you know, became in, in this monotheistic, you know, and then eventually adopted by the Roman Empire. Yeah. Uh, similar opinion to that. That's why, you know, they say that and that deals with why, you know, the Christian God, the Jehovah God is so wrathful today in modern uh, texts, you know, um, because with the flood, you know, in the flood that deals a lot with um, rain gods and gods of storms. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Any God that causes a flood, that is a clear let you know that this is a storm god. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or they wouldn't there, call a storm like a flood. You know, it's, it's just like, it's just right there. You know? Yeah, very well put. And, you know, so many people, so many people who are, you know, of the, you know, who are Christians just don't know. They're so ignorant of their God's history. Oh, yeah. You know, and the, this God has just taken their energy. And, you know, they don't even realize how they're being played. Right. Exactly. Because like I learned this, too, whenever they pray to this God, you know, you're giving energy and power away from you to this God so that he could do something for you, manifest something for you, give them a blessing. You know what I'm saying? And things yeah. like that. But they're giving it to a predator. That's only their prey. And he's feasting on them. <laughs> I know they'll, they'll literally pour their heart out and give their yeah. entire life and energy. And then their blessing is. Oh, I feel I feel good. Thank you, God, for the blessing. Like, <laughs> right. 
Okay, and if you like that transaction. It's drained and down. And then, you know, what's funny is that they have to do it over and over again. They have to go back, ask for forgiveness, and beg this God so that he won't punish them and send them to hell. Like, man. That's, it, that's not freedom. It's not. It's fucked up. You should there should not even be a threat of hell to begin with. You know what I'm saying? If there was so-called yeah. freedom, you know what I'm saying? If that God should be on a shirt, man. everything, <laughs> how you know that humanity is gonna um rebel against you and then yeah. you're gonna send them to hell. You know it anyway. That's, that's not love. That's not love, but nah, and that, that should be on a shirt, man. You have a cross that says it's not love, it's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> For real, yes. <laughs> Telling you. Oh man, and uh, and uh, uh, I want to go to the other line. It says the demons herein are bringers of power to those grave enough to take it. Um, and you know, in dealing with demons, it they can be intimidating. Um, yeah. Sometimes they're testing you. Sometimes right. they they may you know give the impression that they're they're very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just you know, very intimidating assertive and uh yes authority like figure you know yeah but uh sometimes we need that tough love you know sometimes right. we need to be taught that way and right. you know they're much older and they they know the right way to apply their and that's, the and that's the thing and that's just how life works you know when you walk up on the left hand path you learn life throws things at us to test us so we can overcome it so any spirit that we're working with will in turn do the same thing. And I've yeah. also said that uh, I've been in rituals, you know, uh, about the intensity of uh, demonic forces. I've been right. in rituals and I've said to my, I've laughed to myself. I said, ha, ha, the presences in here are so strong that if right. a normal person was in here, they wouldn't be able to handle this, man. They wouldn't. Yeah. It's, it's strong and it's intense. But to me, it's not, it's not like, it's not an intensity to me to where it's unbearable or that I can't take it. No, I actually love it. I love the intensity, but me thinking and understanding from a, a person who's not on this path perspective, I can just tell who, who isn't of this dark current, they wouldn't be able to take it like how no. I, you know what I'm saying? I can sit within these forces and not be afraid and talk right. to them as they're my brothers and sisters and these presences are strong. Yeah. Um, I mean, the thing is that, you know, we of the left hand path are used to that energy you know we're used exactly. to feeling that energy and feeling that around the yeah. average person would tremble they would they don't they don't know how to react to it you exactly. know and i've had people over my place you know like shaking like that. right <laughs> they don't know how to handle it and this so. is why this is where we get the stories of demonic possession um ouija board sessions gone wrong you know what i'm saying because you got these people who are trying to do these ancient practices that is real stuff it's not just something oh you just play around with it you're trying to play around no. with spirits and shit you know what i'm saying and you're not taking it serious so of course something's gonna go wrong they're gonna be like okay this person that has no knowledge of self so we're about to fuck with you so, but if they see a person like you or me hop on the ouija board they're gonna instantly know this is a self-realized god right here that we're dealing with this is god we're talking to ourselves so they're gonna yeah treat us with the utmost respect the same we do to them and that's why because well, we're not coming playing games we're not fucking playing around yeah you know I, mean? I mean and another another thing is that you know you have to you have to be very specific and know how to go about it if they see someone hop on who's you know basically just they can see they're messing around that's gonna that piss them off exactly you know, if someone keeps knocking on your door and then you answer it and they're just like you know well i'm just fucking around or you know, deep right. dog or, bitch, you know, or whatever. Right. Or if they go the uh King Solomon's way and try to make a pact or summon a demon in the fearful sense. And so right. like that's like somebody coming to your door, you know, coming to you for help, but they're scared of you. They like, I need your help, but I'm afraid you're gonna cast a spell on me. You know what I'm saying? Like you would yeah. feel like, okay, well, fuck it. You feel like that? Shit, we don't need to work together, you know. Yeah, do. yeah. This this path is not for the weak. It's not. It's not. You have to be strong minded. You have to have a level of consciousness beyond normal, uh, mundane, every today things that they give to people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Put a lot of things into people's mind. People have to learn to disconnect from that and seek out 
this ancient occult knowledge. And once you do that, you know, you, you this really helps. Like I was telling my brother just uh the day before yesterday, I was I was telling him he's going through a little tough time. And I'm telling him I like delve into knowledge, man. Open up a book, hop in your meditations, because it's re it really does help when you when you read some of these things. It it um it expands your mind so much that you feel the joy and the greatness, and it really rejuvenates your yeah. energy body. I agree, and you know, that people don't notice, but I noticed that, and I've been noticing that a lot lately. It does. It it, it is fulfilling in certain ways, in many ways, actually. And, you know, I'd advise people um, not just to watch videos online. So, you know, exactly. get a, open a book and, and, and get into the habit of studying because yes, that, exactly. that also helps your magic because it helps you focus, you know, and that's yeah. one of the, that's one of the main points of magic mm -hmm. is focus. Right. And, you know, you have to, having, like with meditation or spell you have, or manifestation, you have to, keep focus on this one thing because if you can't then your energy is not going to go forth to what you're thinking to manifest it you keep that focus on that long enough and keep it clear enough that energy is going to go straight to it and then boom it manifests into life yeah very well said and and another thing i don't mean yeah, to, uh, i mean to, uh keep going too long on this one yeah go, no no go um, ahead go ahead we got time. Uh, a lot of people a lot of people do need to get into studying because, and it's hard because with today's society, they are dumbing a lot of people down. You know what I'm saying? They're only showing videos and they're keeping people's attention spans very small and low. So they yeah. won't read. And like where I come from, bro, like I come from the hood, man. And so a lot of people like some, like it's so shunned, like you will get scolded for being a person that reads books. You know, this yeah. is how much they brainwash the people, especially my people where I come from. They'll they'll fucking make fun of you for being a nerd, for uh gaining knowledge. And that's when anything people make fun of nerds for being smart. When that's yeah. something that should never be made fun of. Anybody that's a nerd that's smart, these are people that's gonna take the world and make it a better place for us. You know what I'm saying? Including right. ourselves who uh strive to be smart, you know what I'm saying. They, they make fun of these people, but all the things we have are because of these. And, and we're letting people business. know that, you know, we we like to read and we're, you know, we're proud of it because it helps us become better people. And, exactly. and it, it's not lame at all. It's not, not at all, man. Knowledge should never be something considered lame. You know, it's not considered lame over here because with our spirit and our soul, we yearn and we are eager to learn more and not just learn about the physical world we want to learn the deep occult esoteric knowledge the unseen knowledge of the spirit and the mind and magical power you know yeah and you know it's like you know an occult book is like having the code book to life you exactly. learn how, how energy you know how to manifest how to manifest and how to change and direct energy right it really helps us yeah navigate through this 3d realm dimension that we are in it really does as above so below oh. so yeah man, you know you had mentioned about you know the short attention spans from uh people who are on social media a lot that's another reason why i, I tell people don't just watch videos online yeah. you know because that's just that's that's teaching yourself to have a short attention span you need it you need and to have just that uh, i don't mean to cut you off but not just that like that's hand-me-down knowledge. You know what I'm saying? You you only listen to what somebody else says. That's not really learning. You have to delve deep. You have to do your research. You have to, if you expect, if you're listening to a video, anybody out there, clarify anything that they're saying. You have to, okay, they're saying this. So let me go find the research. Or if you if you can get them to respond, ask them for the sources, what they are teaching. Because if you're just listening to somebody, this is just what Christians do. They don't really read the Bible, so they go to church to listen to it from a fucking preacher. And you can you can walk up to the majority of Christians and you can school them on their own shit. Why? Because they only listen to a fucking preacher. And they most of them don't know. You they know, they're read. dependent on someone else to dig into their book and and you know, and I'm not saying they're all like that. You right. Know, no, but no. a lot of them are. A lot know? of them. Right. That's true. That's yeah, true. Very.
Um, let's go to page 26. Okay. Now, uh, what are the last paragraph, last sentence from that paragraph? It says, from chaos, we may establish a sense of temporary order. Now, One second. hold on, I'm trying to find it. Because uh, I think our books are different. So like our pages. It might be. It's on the Goetic okay. Circle of Black Evocations and Packs. That page has got the triangle on it. Okay. I wonder so, if we have different editions. A little bit, kind of. But where does it start again? Uh, it, it, it's the paragraph that says Eliphas Levi's Masterwork, Transcendental Magic, and so forth. Oh, okay. All right. It, it might, yeah. Uh, it's on page 24 for me. <laughs> oh, Okay, I'll have to keep that in mind. Right. That you're a couple okay. pages ahead of me. But yeah, from, from chaos, we may establish a sense of temporary order. Mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes chaos is necessary. You know what I mean? You need to have things, you know, mixed up. You need to right. go through those, you know, you need to establish order. You can't have things good all the time. Right. Like I say, like uh, a lot of people, like I've been learning recently that, you know, in our most down times, when we feel like, like, you know, we're at our lowest in our life and we feel deep and depressed and sad and thing, and this is very chaotic and it's hard to cope with. And, but what I tell people is that what's great about this is that it show it, this, what may seems like a low downtime, it gives you time and it shows you um, images of within yourself within of uh, on how to navigate through whatever caused these problems and depression and how to uh work through them if they happen in the future and you know how to go about certain things you know you learn a lot when you're going through your most chaotic times and i can speak on that because I, i've been going through a chaotic time in my life and i've been learning that i've been seeing this with my mind because you know I pay attention to the subtle things of life. I don't just look at the surface. I, I, I'm an introvert, so I'm quiet and I look deep at things and I just sit and I observe everything, the observer. So mm. I'm watching it all and I, I can see like, you know, this subtle knowledge, it just drops in my head. It's just, it's just something I just know, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I myself am an introvert as well, so I can relate to that. Right, right. Yeah, we're, we're like, you know, not to no disrespect to anybody who's not introverted, but we are more aware than the average extrovert. You know what I'm saying? The person who's always talking so much and loud in the room uh, of a group of people are the ones that aren't aware. The person over there sitting, just being quiet, you know, they may be participating, but they're not the center of attention. They're chilling and they're observing everything. Yeah, someone who talks a lot, you know, can't really back it up. You know, I would call it, it's like the, uh, like the, an example of a hollow tree. You know what I mean? You you knock on it, it makes a lot of noise, but ain't nothing inside. Right. Ain't no substance to it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and you can tell that just by watching people and reading them and just hearing, listening. Just hearing what they say, you know? Yeah. You can pinpoint it. Mm hmm Exactly. Um next page over where it says uh conditions of success and infernal evocations okay okay so number three it says wisdom is knowledge applied and the understanding of patterns by experience mm -hmm. um so when you get that knowledge and you see those patterns then you get to see an understanding of okay now i can see what's going on now i can start to recognize patterns in life and right. then you can build on that right and it also opens the window of opportunity for you to take what you just learned this is where the wisdom comes in you take what you just learned and then you apply it to this mm -hmm. window of opportunity but sometimes you know it's easier said than done and sometimes we're not always aware of this window of opportunity you know and sometimes we may fail with the knowledge we have learned and fail to apply it fully. And that's okay. As long as one practitioner keeps striving for that success and to keep going forward, that's all right. Because it's okay to fail. A lot of people don't understand that. It's better to fail than to never try at all. You know what I'm saying? Because failure, it also deals with this. It uh, opens that window of opportunity for you to become better and to, you know, mm -hmm. apply what now, you learn. You know, you know Sometimes in life, if you don't get it right, life will continually 
test you again and again on the same thing until you get it right. Until you learn it. Yep. And then when you see this come along again, you can, okay, now I can apply this knowledge and this understanding to this, and then I can get to the next level, level up, yeah. you know? Right. right. And that's what so, this path is about. You know, this path yeah. is all about that. It's about facing our fears and our darkest worries and our problems head on. So, because this is what makes us stronger. Because if you run from your problems and things of life, it's only going to make you weak. But you face them and you overcome them, you're you're you become mentally, physically, and spiritually and powerful. spiritually and spiritually because the universe, you know, will you know, in order to have strong magical power and intense magical power to level up magically, you need to have gone through certain things before right. you can have right. that it's, just, it's not just something that's just given out freely right and this, nothing is free right and this also goes with uh the word gnosis which what i learned was um knowledge uh gained through experience so yeah. a lot of things we speak on we speak on witchcraft and the arts of magic because um we have the gnosis we have experienced certain things we have experienced certain spirits you know what i'm saying and that's exactly what it says on that line through experience, <laughs> which is no ex exactly, exactly. Now, let's go over to uh, page. Well, for me, it's page forty-one. It's it's okay. uh, it says the apparition of the spirit, query to the spirit. It's that paragraph. It's after it gives the sigil of Astaroth. Okay. Basically, when it's it, it, it's explaining you how to write out the contract here. Um, it says the affirmation and treatise of the spirit unto the black magician. Um, no. No, query of the spirit, response of the mm -hmm. spirit, covenant with the spirit. Um, well, it's just one line here. It says, I mm -hmm. seek this agreement for the period of, then the, you put the time the time period right so but what i like about that is that it tells you this is what i tell some i've i tell some people is that you need to have set a time limit for your spells you can't just say this and that and this and that will happen in your incantation okay it'll happen but it could happen three weeks from now it could happen three years from now it could happen 30 years from now right Exactly. When in magic and in, in addressing the universe, you need to be specific and set by this time or right. in between this time to that time a reasonable amount of time. Right. Because a lot of people will say, oh, well, it's it's not working. So I guess magic doesn't work. No, you didn't. You weren't specific enough. Go ahead. Right. And not just that, like either they weren't specific enough and they didn't physically work towards it enough. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, you know, we have to set these times because, um, you know, we want to have a not an unreasonable time, but we have to have a reasonable time for these things to manifest in the real world. You know what I'm saying? And this is where when you learn witchcraft and magic that um, you have to set very, very, very clear intentions, because if you don't, then the universe it's going to pick it up the energies around you yourself you're going to it's going to pick up these energies from you and it's going to manifest it in a sense of that you didn't really want to manifest because the intention wasn't put forth very clear so i agree yeah. i agree yeah very very well said i guess it, i guess you could say you know you're also in speaking to the universe you're also speaking to your subconscious exactly it's, it's all you it's all you. in a certain way and then that's what you're going to manifest you know yeah definitely you know so um yeah so next let's go to okay for me it's page 48 but it's the it's it's on part two where you'll see part two um second inferno book the next page over when you get to part two okay what is it called uh, it says Pacta Conventa de Manorium. Um, but it's the next page over. It's right above where it says Invocation of the Infernal Kings. Okay, one second. Yeah, it's the 
Oh, okay, I found it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So page the, 44 for me. <laughs> okay. Damn, but so crazy. where it says invocation of the infernal kings, the paragraph right above that. Okay. Um, it says, remember that spirits manifest in numerous ways, mm -hmm. rarely as physical manifestations, as so long depicted. There may be several omens or signs, shadows which move quickly, the feeling of being watched, voices or images appearing in your mind. Do not dismiss your visions and remain steadfast in your design. Spirits will test your strength of will. So you have to be open. You know, it, it could be a shadow. It could be a sound. It could just be a, pheasant, a presence being felt. Sometimes you may see something, but, right. you know, it will come. But you right. have to have an open mind and, and, and be, you know, be aware of your surroundings. Right. And, you know, what's funny is that I was just telling people about this. I was like, you know, spirits, just like the book says, they manifest in subtle ways in our reality that you have to be aware. You can't just look at the subtle. I mean, the surface things you have to look. You have to be aware of the deep things and just be aware because like 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 for this is an example. I've seen spirits manifest in my life in many ways in one way. So say, look, I'm at work. I work at Taco Bell. So I'm taking the sour cream thing. And I okay. squirt it. And I just squirt it. You know what right. I'm saying? Just doing the thing. Just going on autopilot. Boom. Tell me why this thing looked just like, almost like Pazuzu. And I just squirted it twice. And it formed the form of a demon. And I was like, oh, yeah. right there. That, that's, just, that's an example of simple manifestation. of It may sound silly. And it may seem weird. But that's that's the subtleness that you have to be aware you know, of. That's the little shit. I have had a similar experience at work where you know, I'm doing my thing. And then all of a sudden I, you know, I'm working on a table and then all of a sudden I hear, I hear somebody shout, ah, boom, someone pounds on the table. Wow. And then people around me are like, what the hell was that? You know? And I'm, I just chuck like, I know who it was, you know, you know exactly what it was. Right. You know? And, yeah. and then everyone's like freaked out. Like, Oh my God, I heard a growl that someone just pounded and made stuff shake on the table. And I'm just like, <laughs> If right. you do, you know, but yeah, I can relate to that, man. Definitely. Like even in the sky, <laughs> like, you know, I've seen them manifest in the sky, in the yeah. nighttime, through the clouds. Whispering in the wind. Yeah. All yeah. that, man. Like people, you know, they just have to learn, you know, to be aware. That's one thing, you know, they think, oh, when you summon a demon, oh, they're just going to take this physical ass fucking super form in just a matter of seconds. No, nah, it don't work like that. Even if you can get it to do that, that takes some time and practice and strength of energy you know for they, a spirit to manifest like that they can manifest any way they want right right and most of the time you're not going to manifest like that and uh it, even this book speaks about when uh the messages we receive you know they don't speak directly to us like you and i they come through our dreams our visions uh subtle things in real life real time you know through other people as well yeah yeah they can very very much so well, it looks like uh, looks like we're running out of time here, but um, right. it, it it's that. been a great study. Uh, everybody yeah, who's watching, amazing. once again, uh, Grand Grimoire of Infernal Packs by Michael W. Ford, this and the link. Good book. Yeah, good book. Amazon link will be below in the video description. Um, Ace, uh, thanks again for coming on. Anything that you got uh, going on right now? Any new music you want to go ahead and promote? Yeah, man, I, I can say, man, in the infamous six, you know, I'm a part of two labels, you know, just so everybody can know. Uh, I have my own label called Goblin Music, and I'm also a part of another label called Infamous Six for my bro DJ Fire. So right now we're working on a lot of uh, promotion and we have a, a second album coming out. It, uh, we have a first album called Cult Gang, but we have some things going on with some of the members who were a part of Cult Gang and stuff like that, you know, some legal things so we might we're probably going to have to change the name for the next album but right. we, we we are working and also in gbm goblin music i got a lot of uh solo music coming soon and yeah. in gbm we're working on a goblin music album so right now and i've been gathering beats from producers you know buying beats and stuff like that and we have a, uh, a goblin music album that will be featuring all of my goblin music artists which are my brothers okay. Man. Cool. It's gonna I'm be looking lit, man. I'm looking forward to that. Anybody who's watching, um, link in the links in the uh, below in the video description, it will be a link to uh, Ace's uh, Spotify. Thank you very much for that, channel. Bro. Subscribe. Uh, in fact, if you go to the go to the Dark Sorcery channel, go to the playlist. 
you scroll down, you'll see a playlist for Ace the Goblin. He has a playlist right. now. It's on the front page when you open the YouTube channel. You'll see the the different videos that I've done with him, and then you'll see a couple of songs that uh, I appreciate allow us to put up. You know, uh, subscribe, check out his Spotify. Um, it's all, all good stuff. Platform. Very very good occult. One more thing before we head yeah, off, ahead, we got go less than one minute. But I just want to say one thing before we hop off. This book yeah. is a must get book. Because it is going to clear everybody's misconceptions about making packs with the devil. It is. And very straightforward, easy to follow. I agree. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, Ace. Everybody who's watching, like and subscribe to Dark Sorcery. Be sure. Like and subscribe.